Good afternoon. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to our first ever Facebook Opera Live event here from Pensacola Opera. My name is Cody Martin. I'm the Director of Education, and I'm coming to you live from my home here in Pensacola. Um, as I'm sure you're probably aware, by this point, we have recently had to postpone our planned production of Il Trovatore, as well as our upcoming Operazzi Ball. So stay tuned on our Facebook page and in your email for details on those rescheduled events. But in the meantime, we are also working on a few exciting projects aimed at engaging and supporting our community during these times when we just simply can't gather together. And Opera Live is just one of those programs. And this will be a series of interviews with artists and volunteers and community members, as well as a few special performances. So be sure you're following our Facebook page to um, be on top of any of these upcoming events. During this broadcast, um, feel free to put any questions that you might have for either me or for our guests in the live comment feed down below. We'll be able to see those, and at the end of the broadcast, we'll answer as many of those as we can with the time that we have. So without any further ado, I'd like to welcome our guest for today, John Risen. John is a tenor who was an artist in residence with Pensacola Opera back in 2016-17. And then he also returned to us for Madama Butterfly in 2018. So he's definitely a familiar face around here. Let's get him on. Welcome, John. How are you? Hello. I'm good. How are you? Good. Good to talk to you. Hey, so you for, for people who don't know you, give us a quick, you know, two or three minute rundown of who you are, where you are, where you're from, those sorts of things. Sure. Ooh, two to three minutes. All right. Uh, I grew up in Metro Detroit and um, I grew up playing baseball. That's kind of like my thing. And I went to uh, Michigan State University with hopes to play baseball there. Turns out I could sing. And long story short, I went into singing and gave up my career of baseball, but not before picking up the cheesiest song you'll ever hear along the way, my baseball song that I tote with me. Um, then I went out and I went to uh, a residency program down at Shreveport Opera where I met uh, Maestro Shannon. Um, and once I met him, he offered for Jillian and I, my, my wife, um, to come to Pensacola as young artists. And so we came together and um, I guess the relationship just kept growing with, uh, with the company, with Chandra and with uh, Jerry, and they keep putting up with us and bringing us back. Uh, and so <laughs> it's been a pretty wonderful uh, relationship with Pensacola Opera. We've done two, three She's done three. I've done two um, jukebox galas, which is one of the best events ever, by the way. Uh, yeah. Other companies. So your, wife, your, your wife is a singer as well, in case people don't know that. Yes. Jillian Lynn Cotter, or Jillian Risen, depending on what day you find her on. <laughs> she is an incredible, talented, beautiful mezzo-soprano um, who was a resident artist at uh, Pensacola as well. And she actually sang um, the... Uh, Older Alice and Glory Denied when that production happened. And then um, several roles, including one in Dead Man Walking and stuff like that. And then she was also in Madam Butterfly as Suzuki. Wonderful. And, and where do you guys live now? We are in Lansing, Michigan. Jillian actually just is finishing a doctorate at Michigan State University, part of my long story. And mm -hmm. uh, I don't know how that happened, believe it or not. Uh, she got <laughs> right back to my past. Um, but it, I have to tell you right now is the time where we appreciate it the most because our health insurance and everything is through the university, which while it's um, doing the social distancing, they're not stopping payments and stuff like that. And so that's okay. been really amazing right now. Um, yeah, and we've been uh, having a nice time here catching up. One thing I'll say as a traveling performer is suddenly you, you get isolated at home and you realize that, you know, this is not so bad. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> so bad to be yeah, home. The most, yeah, the most time you spent at home for a while, I bet. Yes, definitely. <laughs> uh, well, speaking of being a traveling performer, can you tell us about some of your highlights? Maybe like some favorite roles, some recent things, what you have coming up? Absolutely. Ooh, I think. Well, one of the coolest things I did was I got to sing the voice of Tony in West Side Story at the Lincoln Center. Uh, at the Koch Theater, the former New York, New York State Theater, uh, with the New York City Ballet. And so I was the voice of the guy dancing. 
And it was really great to be up there because I'm singing all these songs that I know and love, like Something's Coming and, and things like that. And watching a world-class ballet dancer do all the choreography. Um, and so that was one of the first times that I got separated from being, you know, the guy walking and singing. Um, but that was a really cool thing. And it was my Lincoln Center debut. And so it was, it was a lot of fun. Um, other things I've done that I've been really happy with is I've done a lot of Gilbert and Sullivan at this point, which I'm actually coming back this year to do um, with Pensacola Opera. I'm doing uh, HMS Pinafore. And uh, hello from Arizona, Jane. <laughs> Um, and it'll be my third time doing HMS Pinafore. And the last, uh, two times ago, I did it actually with, uh, Jerry and Dean. Uh, and so I'm really excited to see everybody and do it again. Um, and upcoming I'm doing, I think I'm doing four JNSs this year alone. Um, and some more glory denies, which is another show I've done a lot. Um, I think I've got my, my Carnegie Hall debut coming up as the tenor soloist in the Messiah. And so I'm really excited about that because, you know, that's like one of those, yeah, I'm making my Carnegie Hall debut kind of situation. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> it's not bad music either, that there, Messiah. Yeah. So now, you know, things kind of going crazy. Um, what has that been like as a singer? Uh, companies are canceling productions, but that also obviously means that singers are losing a lot of work right now. So what has that been like for you? It's been a challenge. I, I was in uh, Birmingham, Alabama with Opera Birmingham's production of Cendrillon and I was singing Prince Charming. And we did two and a half weeks of rehearsal. We got to um, production week. We just did an orchestra rehearsal and the orchestra sounded incredible. We were all amped. It, it was just a great chemistry amongst all the people. And then the pandemic ruling happened. And um, Keith Wolf Hughes down there had to make the hard choice of sending us home, which I think was the right uh, choice now <laughs> we see yeah. and, uh, within a week, the whole world would shut down. And so he sent us home. I think he was one of the first companies that had to make that um, decision. And so um, it was hard because he had to make the decision also how he was going to pay us because as um, uh, a self-employed performer, most of these contracts have a force majeure clause, an act of God clause saying, if something outside of our control, like a pandemic happens, we reserve the right not to pay you. Now, I will say in my particular case, he was very gracious and he gave us a prorated um, amount. But I have to say that's a dangerous play for a company because they're not going to make any money on the production that they've just paid for. And so right. that was graciousness coming from them. But I also under would understand if they couldn't do that because... You know, we don't want these companies to collapse because then we don't have any work. But um, it, it was tough at first emotionally because within a five days, I lost four gigs upcoming. Um, and one of them was with Jillian, and we were really excited about doing that together. It was uh, Made of Orleans, and she was going to sing oh, Jillian. Yeah. And um, I think she was more upset than me, which makes sense because um, it was like a huge huge role her first like massive role since she did dead man walking in shreveport um and it just got pulled out because of the pandemic and uh so it took probably a week for our, our heads to stop spinning and us to stop panicking about finances and, and our budget and stuff like that right. because um for the upcoming shows they just said hey we'll do it maybe in a year or two which is good but it means that you know may june july august when you know, Jillian's pregnant. And so for those months, <laughs> we were expecting a certain level of income. Um, yeah. But we've, we've got it figured out. And, and thankfully, our government is, is actually sending out money to us coming up soon, which is pretty cool, um, mm -hmm. which will definitely help with for all of us self-employed people who just lost a lot of income. Yeah. And before, I think before the recent legislation passed, it was going to be really hard for gig workers like singers and people to even get unemployment. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Have you worked with that at all? We've messed around with it in the last few days since, I guess, I guess yesterday. We messed around with it yesterday. Um, and they don't have the official forms up in our state for uh, self-employed people yet, but we familiarized ourselves with what's going to happen. And um, as soon as the forms are up, we get in touch with them on a particular day. That's how it works in Michigan, at least. And uh, 
then it, it goes from there based on uh, work that we had last year and then what work we, we lost coming up, which is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So hopefully so we'll get that figured out soon. Yeah. Well, in the meantime, I know that you have a, an exciting project that you've been working on to kind of help other artists in your situation. You want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah. So after that first week of kind of reeling and, and, and spinning my wheels going, what on earth am I going to do? I'm, I've got a child on the way and I just lost X amount of dollars coming up that I was expecting to have for medical bills and, and things like that. Um, I need to do something, something that, that gets the ball rolling again. And um, I'd recently made uh, a studio recording um, of, of pops music, things like musical theater, really famous things like Oh Sole Mio or Dynast Mein Ganzes Herz, things you might see at the Jukebox Gala if you've ever attended one of those at Pensacola Opera. And um, when I released it, it had a nice following and, and people seemed to really enjoy it. And I kind of set it aside because I was too busy on the road performing. And when this happened, I, I decided to do a little research. And in my research, I figured out that um, all these streaming services like Apple Music, Spotify, Google Play, all these things, they have their own computer algorithms and stuff that decide how um, music is uh, disseminated based on genre and what people are listening to that genre. And um, what I found is that there are millions and millions of people who subscribe to classical music, but there are there, it's less than half a percent of the submissions to uh, playlists and to um, these curators on these streaming services are classical musicians. And so what that means is there are millions and millions of people who want to listen to that genre and do listen to that genre, but there are barely any people submitting music to be listened to by that audience. And so I took it on myself to, to basically call or email everyone I knew who had made an album and had it on streaming services like Spotify. And I got in touch with 20 or so people, and now I think 22. And I asked them each to give me um, a song so that I could get them some royalty money and get people involved and give an audience a playlist of people that they've heard and seen. I mean, if you look at the list now, there are people who've sung at the Met, there are people who've sung at Houston Grand Opera, at Pensacola Opera, at Shreveport Opera, at La Scala, at all these companies around the world. And these are all people that we all know each other because the business is this big. And um, it's really turned into a beautiful thing because a lot of news um, sources have picked it up. Fox News Detroit had brought me on for an interview. Uh, the Shreveport Times did an article. Broadway World did an article. Um, and hundreds of people now are following it and listening to it daily. And I think I checked the statistics yesterday. It's gotten tens of thousands of streams already, which is exactly what I was hoping for. And what that means on a very technical level is soon the Spotify team themselves will see that this is an isolated genre getting tens of thousands of streams and they'll go, oh my gosh, classical music has been submitted. And then hopefully by the end of this summer, it will actually get sent to millions of strangers across the world because that's how it works. Um, and so I'm, I'm just so glad for all the support that people have, have put into it. And I, it's going to be my passion project. I mean, I'm, it's still cold here. It's like 40 degrees in Michigan. <laughs> so I am sitting inside trying to kill time. And I found calling, you know, news stations and calling uh, companies and stuff like that and saying, hey, would you be willing to just put out a word? I mean, people like listening to music, especially if it's people they've seen on stage. It makes it even more fun. Um, yeah. And just to see how it grows, because it's been one week and there are 300 listed followers and over, I think it was like 11,000 uh, streamers. So that's in a week. So yeah. I'm hoping by the end of three months that it's something really, really special and gets classical music onto the radar um, the way it should be. Awesome. Um, I put a link to that Spotify playlist in the chat. So anybody who wants to to find that playlist there's a link in there you can get to it there um so all they have to do is listen and that is that's all they need to do truly um i have a website um that i made if, if it also helps which is literally my website john risen.com j-o-h-n-r-i-e-s-e-n.com and there's a page that says support for artists where i explain the steps that i won't go into now but um essentially 
all the different streamers from different places, uh, uh, how do I say this? The statistics basically on their end um, link all these different people around the world listening to the genre that we are all in. And if you follow the playlist and, and save the songs, which I explain more on that website, um, that algorithm picks up very quickly and starts sending it out to more and more people that are not connected with me or any of my friends that have been sharing it. Um, and every stream is a fraction of a cent. Mm -hmm. probably, but when you have 10,000 people doing it, that's suddenly dollars and, and dollars compounding upon themselves. And that's how these, these services have always worked since they came out. And uh, if we can get tens of thousands of people, it really does make a financial difference to all the 22 people involved. Yeah, so the goal is to just get as many streams as you can so that the money that the people are earning from the streams adds up over time. Yes, exactly. Because you're not, you're not paid like per stream, you're paid like per quarter. So you right. wait three months and then you'll get sent a check for however much happened in that three or four months. And if, if it was, like my album now has 180 or 190,000 streams. So probably next month I'll get a check for like $900 or something. It's not the most glamorous, but at the same time, when you're looking at a goose egg and or nine hundred dollars, you're going, "Wow, that's a huge difference." Um, yeah, that's, I mean, that's a, that's a good chunk of change, though. For yeah, and all it, is, all it takes is listening to beautiful music, and we all—I figure all the people watching like doing that already, and so uh, you can also turn it down and have it like in the background while you're cooking. It doesn't have to be your forefront of your life yeah um, for sure but streaming it really does help and i know several of the people uh, listening already are and i'm i can't tell you how much it means to me to see the numbers actually continue to grow i thought at mm -hmm. first it was a joke i was like i'm gonna do this for fun and then to see the thousands of people who have who have jumped in um has been really humbling and and it's a beautiful thing so thank you uh, give us a few examples of the artists that you have on that list people let that me, you know let me look <laughs> Let me look from the top, John Risen. Okay, uh, Nicole Cabell. Uh, my my friend Nicole Cabell is a world class soprano. She's sung everywhere that you can imagine. I met her at Michigan Opera Theater when she debuted as Violetta, and I was twenty one. And for some reason, their Gastone died or got sick or something, and they <laughs> called Michigan State and said, "We are panicking. We need someone who's about six foot tall." to play Gastone and fill this costume. And they asked me to do it. And so I made my Michigan Opera Theater debut, which was a little premature at the time, because that's a very, very <laughs> big company, um, with Nicole Cabell and Stephen Powell and um, all these like really, really successful singers. And I still hadn't even like performed anything yet. Um, yeah. And Nicole was just so sweet. And I, uh, I remember I won the districts of the Met Comp for the first time that year. And it was her debut of Violetta, and she took me aside on stage and goes, "Honey, I'm so proud of you. I, we're, we were all talking about it. We're just so thrilled to see what happens to your career." And uh, I still think about that. That like it's her debut at an A house, and she's talking to me in English about how proud of me she is. So anyway, she's one of the people. Richard Troxel, who's an amazing tenor that I got had the pleasure of spending some time with out at Santa Fe when Jillian was singing there. Um, Will Liverman, who uh, once again I met taking photos with Jillian at Santa Fe, uh, amazing baritone. He just sang Papageno at the Met, um, and wonderful guy. He's got a gorgeous gospel piece. I listen to it all the time. Actually, it blows my mind. Uh, yeah. One of my teachers from Michigan State, Melanie Helton, who is a wonderful soprano, uh, is with Ricky Ian Gordon himself on one of the recordings. Uh, doing Will There Really Be a Morning from Ricky and Gordon's um, oh, I album. love that song. And so. uh, it's the first recording, actually, of it. And so I was thrilled to put it on there. Uh, Pensacola opera favorite, Adelmo Guirarelli, he's on here with an incredible oh, right. of the art song Mama done with, uh, like, a classical guitarist. It's oh, lovely. amazing. Uh, I mean, the list goes on. People like Amy Owens and uh, Tom Chapulo is represented on here. Um, a friend of mine, Katrina Thurman, um, Maria D. Lopez. I mean, all sorts of friends from all over the country that I've either sung with or I've worked with in another way. 
Um, and I think we're up to 22 people represented, including modern composers like my friend Evan Snyder. Uh, one of the pieces is a world premiere piece that he wrote. And, and uh, so I'm just putting stuff up there that I, I'm like, hey, guys, let's represent each other. <laughs> yeah, no, that's awesome. That sounds like a wide range and a variety of genre and singers. So that's really great. Um, if you're just joining us, we have a link to the Spotify playlist down below, and that's going to support um, all of us as well as increasing their presence on Spotify. I'm trying to see if we have any questions. Here's one we might be able to answer, okay. which is what possessed you to give up baseball for opera? Ah, Sue, actually, it wasn't injury. I mean, I guess you could say if I, I did get injured in high school, but it had nothing to do with. Uh, my choice at the time, um, I tore my left shoulder as a junior and that affected my scholarship. Um, when I did eventually get offered scholarships to like D1, D2 level schools. But what happened is my grandmother had sent money to all of her grandkids to get some kind of arts training. And it blew my family's mind that as musical as they all are, because they're all very musical and my brother and sister have perfect pitch and my dad played piano and organ and my mom played cello and sang in musicals that I couldn't match pitch. And so they forced me into voice lessons to learn how to match pitch. <laughs> and oh, wow. very quickly I picked it up and uh, my athleticism helped a lot. And the teacher realized that if they talked to me kind of as an athlete at first, that I would pick it up more quickly and um, things really flew from there. And once, once I got to Michigan state and auditioned for the music program, because people thought I was really talented. They uh, convinced me to, to switch my major and go that route. And I'm really glad that it went that way. Um, Cause my life, I mean, I might've made it in baseball. I mean, I was throwing in the nineties. It's hard to say, but I'm really, I really like, I really like what we do. I really love sharing music with people and, and getting yeah. to, to touch people this way, which I love sports, but it's not the same as the effect that I feel when I'm performing. So tell us about the, the baseball song you mentioned earlier. <laughs> well, it is a song by Craig Carnelia called What You'd Call a Dream. And um, in essence, when I was 19 at Michigan State, I just switched into voice. And my teacher, Richard Fracker, um, was retired. He, he was, they used to have contracts at the Met where you would uh, sing X number of roles every year for ever. And he mm -hmm. did that. 16 years and he he was a tenor and he sang several leads but his his big things that he did was always being the second guy to Pavarotti he was like Pavarotti's go-to second guy for a couple years and so um he retired and came back to Michigan and um he was my teacher so very well-known guy he has a recital he walks out with a baseball cap and a bat on his shoulder and he says, oh, when I was a kid, I played a lot of baseball and I considered going into it for college. But I, I went this route and ended up singing at the Met and it was really cool. Anyway, this is what you'd call a dream. And he sings this song that um, happens in three parts. There's the first stanza, which is kind of cheesy. A lot of people think at first it's uh, there are two men out and it's in the ninth and the score is four to three. There's a man on first, there's a man at bat and the man at bat is me. And so it goes on from there, like with this cute mm -hmm. rhyming scheme. And it gets to the middle section where you um, you realize that it's this beautiful memory where his father's there and he hits the home run and he wins the game and everyone's cheering and it's so wonderful as the sun's shining on his face and everyone's happy. And then it goes back, it returns like in an ABA form to um, to that beginning stanza. And suddenly the, the accompaniment is basically gone. It's just like a memory. And uh, he sings the whole thing and he gets to the end and he says, and the man at bat was me. And it's what you'd call a dream. And so it's this process of living this memory of something that you loved so much from your childhood. And uh, I wept like a child when he sang it. And it was the first time I ever cried to anything musical in my life. And uh, I begged and begged and begged <laughs> to sing it. And he waited a couple of years and then he assigned it to me for my, um, my graduate recital and said, okay, it's time. And I kind of took it with me from there. Um, and now as I, as I get older, I, it means more and more to me as I go, which is kind of amazing. <laughs> yeah. and that's actually on the, the playlist. Oh, wow. 
What are do you have any other favorite just party pieces or fun songs that you like to sing? Oh, we don't have enough time for that. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I love all the the classic schmooze things. One of my favorite um, pieces ever, and I know the show isn't done much, is Stranger in Paradise from Kismet. Oh, yes. It blows my mind. I got to do it once with orchestra, uh, uh, like in a Pops concert. And I just could not believe how beautiful it was to do with that orchestration and everything. Mm -hmm. It was like doing the butterfly duet, except not anywhere near as hard. <laughs> well, you know that song comes from opera, right? It comes yeah. from yes. the Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it, it's operatic, so of course we love it. <laughs> I mean, that's my kind of stuff. I like singing yeah. in English because, of course, it's the language I know. Mm -hmm. um, but I also love the huge grand, you know, the grandeur of opera and opera singing and really being connected to your body. And so that's all those kind of go-to things for me. Yeah. Here's a question. What are you guys doing to pass the time while we're all stuck inside? Cooking, board oh. games? Yes, all of the above. Let's see. Thankfully, my personality type is like very optimistic and, and bright. So my I've, I wake up every day like, oh, sweet, let's do stuff. And, and Jillian is a little more uh, realistic and she's kind of getting bored with sitting inside all day. And so we find new things to do. Um, at first we were playing, yeah, we were playing board games and card games and watching TV shows and stuff. That did get boring because you can only watch so much TV before you're like... <sighs> Oh yeah, this is this is not what I want to do. Um, then we did start cooking. Uh, we pulled out all these gifts that we got from from Christmas or birthdays. Of uh, like, we have a bamboo steamer basket, and uh, we've wanted to make bao for the longest time, which are those big fluffy Chinese dumplings. And we had bought cake flour in the past, and we just didn't do it. And so we made real bao. And it was amazing. And then we made uh, biscotti and because Jillian's incredible at baking and we made cookies and cake and you name it, we've probably tried it at this point. And it takes hours to make some of these things. This has been really fun. Um, and so today we actually sat in our basement and we threw a ball back and forth and just talked. And it was <laughs> I mean, I do miss throwing ball, you know, the ball around, but it was actually really fun. And she was like, wow, I could do this all day. I'm like, now nah, you get it. You get it. <laughs> so, so you're just embracing, embracing the relaxation and, and downtime. Yes. Oh, well, I will say for me, I'm not a person who has been home for two months and now is isolated only to home. I was someone who was, I left home on January 1st and I did and completed four jobs and then was on my fifth job in a row when I got back home. And so I was already kind of like, I really wish I could be home and sleeping in my bed and, you know. So it's your fault that we're all stuck at home because you made that wish. <laughs> my fault. <laughs> I did it. Awesome. I well, saw I think we... from Gary earlier that I will answer. It's in oh, December. Yeah, well... The, oh, yes. Uh, Barry, Barry asked when the Messiah is. There we go. Unless they cancel it due to, <laughs> to the pandemic, which, you know, at this point, I've had things in November already canceled. So it wow. is possible. It's December 16th. Where is that? Uh, it'll be at Carnegie Hall. Um, I'm, oh, not, yes. I'm not sure which of the, uh, I assume Alice Tully, but I, they didn't tell me in my contract. So. Okay. Fantastic. Love that. But it's the full dang Messiah. So. That'll be awesome. fun. Well, I think we're about at the end of our time. So thank you again for joining us, John. Everybody, you can uh, find that link to the playlist for John's Artist Relief for COVID-19. The link is in the chat. And we will see John next March in our production of HMS Pinafore. So yes. um, go, go follow his page, John Risen Tenor. What's your website again? Uh, JohnRisen.com. On Ryzen.com. So you can keep up to date. And um, until next time, we will see you again soon. All right. Great to see you, Cody. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye.